What is up guys, this is Nightmare, and today I have a new build for you all. This is my most powerful build yet. This is my Nox Eterna Magic and Nightblade build for the Clockwork City update and onward. This build is going to allow you to do anything you would ever want to do in PvP. Small group, large group, solo play, battlegrounds, CP, and non-CP. So with that, let's get right into the build. Alright guys. Like always, let's start off with my equipment I am using first, the gear sets I will be using. So for my Lax Nox, Nox Eterna builds, I have updated a few things. The main thing that I updated was I got a War Maidens Inferno Staff. So our first five piece that we're going to be using is War Maidens. Um, I kept this sharpened. If you would like to switch it to Nurn Hones, you can with the new system of changing traits on weapons. I decided to just keep it with sharpened. I found sharpened to still work very well, especially for this build. And then I'm using a weapon damage enchant on the front bar, so I can get a really high uptime on this weapon damage enchant. Increase my spell damage by 350. And then War Maidens is going to give us a 2-piece spell crit, 3-piece max magic bonus, 4-piece spell damage bonus, and that 5-piece is going to give us 400 extra, extra spell damage on magic damaging abilities. Now, this set works very well with Magicka Nightblade and also Magicka Warden because all of our damaging spells are going to be magic damage. Moving on to our second five-piece set, this is going to be our Transmutation set. And this is going to be a Restoration Staff of Transmutation, Defending. Uh, I prefer Defending on the rest of the staff bar just to make us even tankier. And then for this build, I like to run these poisons here, train magic poisons. Um, this is just going to help our sustain even more, even though we don't really need it. Um, if you choose not to run poisons, you don't have to. So transmutation is going to give us two piece and three piece magic recovery, and then four piece spell crit, and then five piece is going to allow us to get our crit resistance up even higher. With this build, we are able to hit hard cap on crit resistance. As you can see now, the five piece is blanked out. That's because I'm on my um, destruction staff bar. Once I switch to my resto staff, this five piece set will be activated. As you can see here, I'm on my restoration staff bar now. Five piece bonus is now active and war maiden is not active. This is okay with this build because we are only doing damage on our destruction staff bar and we only need to activate transmutation on one bar. As you can see, it lasts for 20 seconds, which means we can activate it on our Restoration Staff Bar and switch back over to our Destro Staff Bar. By the way, this is a Inferno Staff. So just to give you an example of that, uh, by the way, I found this little uh, cheeky spot up here. Pretty cool. So I'm just going to cast a Heal Over Time and Bar Swap, and as you can see, it's activated. And as I switch back to my Destruction Staff, it stays activated. Moving on with the gear, I'm running a two-piece Scoria. This you can find in um, Veteran City of Ash 2. Right now I have an infused helmet and a Divine's um, shoulder piece. I'm still trying to get my shoulder piece in medium, so that's why uh, this isn't proper traits or enchantments or anything. This would ideally be medium in pin with a magic enchant. For right now, I'm just leaving this one on. And if you're unfamiliar with Scoria, it's going to give us a 1200 max magic or max health bonus, excuse me, and then a chance on dots to proc that meteor that falls from the sky, doing, uh, doing a lot of damage. It's also AoE damage, which is very nice. And surprisingly, you get a really good uptime with this, even though it's an 8% chance on dots. We're running quite a few dots. So we have Crippling Grasp on our front bar. We also have Refreshing Path, which is going to be an AoE, and then G Degeneration. So we have three dots total, but um, we still have very high uptime on Scoria. Moving down, I have an Impin War Maiden Chest with a Magic Enchant, Transmutation Belt to Vines, Impin War Maiden's uh, Gloves, Legs War Maiden, and Boots War Maiden. So I'm running four impin, I believe. One, two, three, and four impin. And then the other three traits are infused and two divines. 
if you have divines on your head that still works good too infused is still good on head chest or legs because it's a large piece you get a bigger enchant and then of course we have transmutation jewelry all arcane all spell damage enchants if you have this in golds which i'm pretty sure you can get this in gold that'll also be very nice moving to the food i use i'm using the most powerful food in the game pretty much for pvp a lot of people are using the witch mother's potent brew for magic builds and dubious Chimera and throne for stamina builds these foods just offer so much for your build you're getting that max health you're getting that max magicka and you're also getting that recovery with this build you pretty much have infinite sustain you're going to be super tanky and your damage output is still incredibly insane potions i will be using so i have trash throw away blue pots either these alliance pots here or all these um these blue throwaway pots here i also use these immovability pots and these detection pots i swap back and forth between those if i have a night blade stealth on top of me i can just use the detection pot for this reason i do not use mark target on this build however you can't swap it out if you need to and then the immovability pots are just very good for 1vxing so that's pretty much going to cover my gear. If you need to go back, slow it down a little bit, that's alright. Um, pause the video when you need it, check it out, and we are going to move on to my skills and abilities next. Alright guys, let's check out my skills I'll be using on this build. I found this setup to be the best setup for this build. Um, for the Magic and I Blade, you just have so many different abilities you could use. However, I just found this setup to be the best for me. So, starting off on our Destruction Staff Bar, we have Crippling Grasp. Now, Crippling Grasp is going to be really good because we're getting a dot, which hits very hard, as you can see there, unbuffed. It's over 13,000 damage over 8 seconds. That's a very high damage over time ability. You're also going to get Major Expedition, which is going to increase your movement speed by 30%, so we're going to be able to be very speedy. And this is also a root, so anybody hit with this will be rooted. Kind of like uh, Dark Talon or, and yeah, Dark Talons from Dragonite. So it's kind of like that immobilization for 1.5 seconds. So this is a very strong ability. It's going to also help us proc our Scoria. Moving on, we have our our main spammable ability, also our main source of healing. We have Funnel Health. Now I chose Funnel Health over the other morph because playing in small group or in battlegrounds, you're going to be getting tons of healing output with this build. Um, usually my Battlegrounds matches, I'm averaging 800,000 to a million damage output with this build. And I'm also averaging 250,000 plus healing. So damage output is insane, healing output is insane, just perfect. So moving on, Funnel Health, it's going to heal you and one other target or ally for 30% of the damage done every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. So very good heal over time. And the great thing about Magic and Nightblade and using this ability is your defense is your offense, or the other way around, your offense is your defense. This is your main spam pool, your main damage output. It's also your main defensive heal. So you need to get more healing. Um, the best way to be defensive with this build is to go harder on offense. Next up, we have our CC ability, which is the strongest, in my opinion, crowd control ability in the game you're going to be able to fear two enemies for 4.5 seconds it goes through block it's very strong it's going to reduce their movement speed for four seconds it's also going to apply minor maim reducing their damage done by 15 percent so this is going to be really good for setting up your damage combo which i'll explain later and also trying to get those pesky uh perma blocking tanks in cyrodiil this is going to be a part of our main damaging combo here, Merciless Resolve. So a good buff, Minor Berserk for 8% uh, 8 increased damage. This is going to last for 20 seconds. And then Light Attack Weaving with Funnel Health. So every time you cast Funnel Health, you'll Light Attack. After 5 Light Attacks or Heavy Attacks, you'll be able to get a proc, which is going to allow you to shoot a bow, which hits very hard. This is your finisher, your main burst damage. And this thing hits 
super hard. Hits like a truck. 10k plus hits on people in Cyrodiil. And then we also have another debuff that we will be able to put on enemies. This is going to reduce their spell resistance by over 5,000. Further increasing our damage output, which... If you remember for, from Funnel Health, the more damage we're doing, the more healing we're doing. So this is going to allow our Funnel Health to hit harder, which is going to give us even bigger heals. We're also getting Minor Magicka Steal from this, which is going to give us 300 Magicka every one second when we're damaging them. So with this dot on them, which will proc every one second, we're going to be getting about 600 Magicka Recovery, pretty much, since Magicka Recovery is every two seconds. So 300 Magicka every one second, very good for sustain, very good for debuffing heavy armor targets, and increasing our healing output on ourselves. For our first, or for our main ultimate, offensive ultimate, this is going to also go in with our damage combo. I'm using Soul Tether. Keeping along the same line of um, ideas here, this is going to be a big area nuke. For hitting multiple targets i usually hit between two to three targets unless it's just one person then i'll just try to get my main damaging combo off on them with this also can use this as a finisher but you're also able to use this in sticky situations getting that um 2000 healing every one second on you moving on to the restoration staff bar i have healing ward this is for emergencies only when i get really low or whenever i swap to this bar I'll cast a healing ward. It's just a shield. It's going to be really good. You're not really trying to protect the shield. It's kind of just like a last line of defense. If you ever um, come to your restoration staff bar, you don't want to stay on it long. You're just coming onto this bar for either buffing up, casting your resto ulti, or cloak. If you're starting to spam healing ward, you're playing the build wrong. You want to be able to stay on your destro staff bar and keep spamming funnel health to get those mad heals off on yourself. Alright, so moving on, we have Refreshing Path. This is going to be a nice AoE heal over time that's ground-based. So, 1,000 magic damage to the enemies in front of you. Every one second, it's a uh, DOT dot. It's also going to be giving us heals for the same amount when we stand in it. And it's also going to give us Major Expedition when we don't have a target to cast, cast Crippling Grasp on. So, Refreshing Path is very nice. It's also going to give us a little bit more survivability, a little bit more heals to stack on ourselves. Now, Degeneration is going to be our main buff. This is going to give us Major Sorcery for 20% increased spell damage. So we want to have 100% uptime on this when we're in a fight. Nice thing about this is that it's also a dot. So whenever this does damage, you have a chance to rock Scoria. It's also going to give you a little bit of healing too, which is really good. And then, of course, for Degeneration, whenever you light attack or heavy attack your target, you have a 15% chance to heal for 125% percent of the damage caused and since we're light attack weaving all the time with this build to get our merciless resolve procs we're going to get pretty good healing from de degeneration okay so next up i have leeching strikes so a lot of people from my last magic and Night blade build told me i'm using the wrong morph no i'm not i'm not using the wrong morph i purposely took leeching strikes the stamina morph the reason for that is because whenever i light attack i want to get stamina back I already have enough Magicka recovery and enough, enough Magicka sustain with this build. However, stamina sustain is lacking. And if you've ever played a Magicka build before, you know that stamina sustain on a Magicka build is very important. You need that stamina sustain to dodge roll, to get out of the roots, to break free, whatever you have to. So Leeching Strikes is the proper morph to use. Your light attacks are going to heal you again. You're going to restore stamina. And then when it expires, you're going to get that big burst of stamina. Very important ability to run on Magic and Nightblade is Leeching Strikes. And then next up we have Cloak. This is a personal preference. You can use it or not. You could use clo um, Vampires, whatever it's called. Let me look real quick. Mistform, you can use Mistform if you want. I prefer Cloak. I prefer to just be stealthy and stuff like that. And then I chose the the morph dark cloak to give me minor protection so even if i'm trying to get away and i keep getting pulled from stealth i'm still going to get that minor protection which is going to keep me alive very nice ability to run and then for the ultimate on this bar i'm using lights champion same idea here is trying to 
use my offense as my defense or my defense as my offense. So whenever I cast this, I'm going to get big heals on myself. I'm going to shoot my health right back up to full pretty much. But I'm also going to be getting major protection, which again is going to uh, protect me, give me 30% reduced damage taken. But it's also giving me major force, which is going to increase my crit damage done by 15%. So even though this is a defensive ultimate, I'm still going to get that 15% extra crit damage, which is going to be huge in allowing me to do increased damage. Alright, so that's going to cover the abilities I'm running. I'm going to go over passives. But um, first off, let me talk about one of the ultimates for this build. So I was streaming a few days ago and someone said that the Destro ulti was magic damage. So you can see here, it says magic damage, right? Well, turns out I was right. It's not magic damage. It changes based off of whatever staff you're using. So as soon as I equip this here, as you can see, it is now flame damage. It changes based off of whatever staff you're using. It'll change to a lightning damage with a lightning staff or frost damage with a frost staff. Now, the reason why we are not using this ultimate, even though a lot of people use it and it does a lot of damage, it's not getting buffed by War Maidens. War Maidens magic damage. This is going to be flame damage. Soul Tether will, rem will continue to be buffed by War Maidens. And I personally think it's going to do a lot more damage. So I keep Soul Tether on. It's more burst damage, which is going to be important with this build. And it looks like we got a buddy up here. Look at that. All right. It's cool. Okay, so... Moving on, I'm just going to go over my buffs real quick. You're going to want to take all of your assassination passives. All of these are going to be very important to you, especially uh, hemorrhage. Increase crit damage by 10%. Shadow, we're taking all of these. Refreshing pass is really good to help your sustain. Shadow barrier is going to give you your tank stats. Dark vigor is going to give you more health. All those are very good. Catalyst is a very strong passive for Nightblades. Whenever you drink your potion, you're going to get 20 ultimate. Very good. Magic of Flood. Very important when making a Magic of Nightblade is you want to make sure you have a siphoning ability on both bars. So we have Leeching Strikes on our Resto Staff, and we have Crippling Grasp on our Destro Staff. reason for that is we want 8% max Magicka added onto both bars. We don't want this to turn off. Healing Done is going to be very good to increase our survivability. And even more ultimate. Destro staff, we have all these. And we have all the restoration staff passives. Light armor, we have all these. And heavy armor, you only need these two. You can also take this one if you want, but I'm running out of points on this character right now. Medium armor passives, you can take these if you want. Like I said, you ideally want to be running this build at 5 light, 1 medium, 1 heavy. I'm just missing my medium shoulder. Vampire, we are a vampire with this build. It's going to help with super, uh, supernatural recovery. It's going to give us 10% stamp and magic recovery. Very good. And undeath passive is also very strong. And now I also want you to remember one of the flaws of vampire is taking extra magic damage or extra flame damage. We'll get into that in a second when I go over my race choice. And then undaunted. So you want to make sure you have your undaunted level 9. So you have 6% increased Magicka, Health, and Stamina when you wear that 511 setup. Assault and Support Passives, take these if you got them. And onto my racial choice. So I personally think for Magic and Nightblade, your best racial choice is going to be a Breton. Reason for that is, when you go Magic and Nightblade, it's very fun to play it as a vampire. As a vampire, you're going to take that extra flame damage. Well, Breton is going to give you increased spell resistance by almost 4,000. And after testing, I have learned that Bretons have a higher resistance to fire than Dark Elves. It is true. So, you can argue that fact if you want. It's what I've tested and that's what I've come up with. So, Breton is going to be the strongest race for Magicka Nightblade. For that spell resistance. We're also going to get 10% Max Magicka. And we're going to get even more recovery than a Dark Elf with reduced cost by 3%. And we have a little bit more Magicka. So, Tier 1 choice is going to be your Breton. 
option two is going to be dark elf and option three is going to be high elf you can also play this build with an argonian if you play this build with an argonian you're going to get crazy amount of heals and really good sustain too so that's pretty much going to cover my abilities next up i will go over my champion points all right let's take a look at my champion point setup real quick take, starting off on the blue tree I have 51 points in the Master at Arms for 19% increased direct damage. Very strong. I love this putting this uh, amount of points into Master at Arms. We also have 75 points into Elemental Expert for 14% increased magic damage. 40 into Elfhorn for 16% increased crit damage. We're running fairly high crit chance on this build, so having 40 points into Elfhorn is going to be very strong. 49 into Blessed for 11% increased healing done. This is just going to allow us to survive and heal through so much damage. And then I threw the rest of my points into Spell Erosion for 1,465 more Spell Penetration. Moving over to the green, I have 20 into Tubbling for 9% reduced dodge roll cost. This is going to be good since I do tend to dodge roll quite a bit. 75 into Arcanist, 40, or 14 increased magic recovery and I am running 64 into tenacity for 13% increased magic and stamina gains from heavy attacks with this build I find I do heavy attack more than any of my other builds switching over to that restoration staff um, just allows you to get really good heavy attacks off very easy heavy attacks they're pretty much guaranteed this is a good source of magic return when you do sometimes drop low but it's very rare when you when you drop low on Magicka. 27 is a Siphoner for 7% increased on that little poison effect from champion points. 44 is a Warlord for 17% reduced dot, uh, break free cost. Very good. 27 into Quick Recovery is going to allow us to get even more healing and more survivability for ourselves. 49 and 49 into Elemental Defender and Hardy for a 11% splits were 11% across the board damage reduction <clears throat> excuse me I have 20 into thick skins for reduced damage on um, damage over time effects 40 into ironclad this is going to be the counter to master at arms so we get 16% reduced damage taken from direct damage abilities 36 into resistant for almost a thousand crit resistance this is going to allow us to hit that hard cap on crit resistance and then I threw the rest of my points into light armor, or uh, yeah, light armor focus. I do think I could take a little bit of these out and put them more into resistant with the setup I'm currently using. I have one less in pin piece than I usually would want. So I may end up doing that just to get my hard cap back with the setup I currently run. So that is going to cover my champion points. Alright guys, I'm going to show you my buff stats real quick. This is going to be... On my Destro Staff Bar, fully buffed. So, first off, I'm going to give myself my crit resistance. Hopefully, if I get it. There we go. Okay. And fully buffed up with Spell Damage Enchant and Major Sorcery. So, we are looking at 3100 and 26 spell damage that is not counting war maiden war maiden does not show up on your character sheet i'm sitting at 3267 crit resistance 1762 magic recovery that is without a potion 35,000 max magica and 19,000 max health on destro staff bar on the resto staff bar I have over 19,000 health, and with a potion, I have almost 2,000 magic recovery. My resistance are also a little bit higher on the rest of the staff bar, so I have 17 and a half thousand spell resistance and 12 and a quarter, or 12,250 physical resistance. On the Destro staff, I have 15,000 spell and uh, 9,000 and 500 physical resistance. That is without my my uh, buff stats. So going back, 
I have 2,000 spell and 15,000 physical. And on the rest of staff, I have 23,000 spell and 17,500 physical. That is with the resistance buff stats. Currently, I have 12 points into health and 52 into Magicka. This was just this old setup I had. I could switch all these into more Magicka. That would increase my damage output, increase my heals for myself. Um, however, I pretty much have run out of golds, and I'm not even able to afford that right now. So, yeah, that's why I currently have that much health. But playing with this much health is a lot of fun. It's super tanky. It feels really good for this build. I'm already doing so much damage, too. So, I may not even need to get more Magicka. Stage 4 Vampirism. I'm using the Apprentice for spell damage. And that's my Witch Mother's Potent Brew. So that's going to cover up the main build video for you guys. I should have some extra gameplay and clips that I will throw in at the end of the build. So you guys can make sure you check that out. And like always, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Leave a like if you like the builds. If you want to see more builds, make sure you subscribe. And I will see you all next time.
GG easy game, boys. Mad heals, mad damage. That's how you play Nightblade right there.